Canada's rental market is red hot and some in the industry say it's likely only going to keep heating up from here. Our next guest believes prices for a one-bedroom condo could easily reach $3,000 in the next seven years. For more on this, Steve Soretsky is a Vancouver realtor at Oakwind Realty and he joins us now. Steve, thanks so much for making time today. Yeah, no worries, thanks for having me on. So the rental market, it did cool down a bit during the pandemic, but it, when you look at uh, prices from the low that they hit in, in 2021, they've just been climbing since then. So uh, the latest rentals.ca data was showing a uh, 1670 for the average price it, as the low in, in 2021. Now it's above 2000. Uh, what is driving the run up in rental prices right now? I think that, you know, during the pandemic, we saw household formation, uh, you know, people obviously leaving studio apartments, moving back in at home, that sort of thing. So household formation sort of fell off. Uh, as, as the economy's reopened, you've seen a lot of people moving back out of the economy. The labor market's obviously strong. So people have been going out and, and absorbing new rentals, obviously immigration, you know, a million people into this country last year in 2022. And so, uh, you know, we just haven't been able to, to build enough housing to, to get house, you know, rents to moderate. And so I think that there is still upwards pressure on rights, uh, rents as we speak. Yeah, it, it's a it's a challenging situation too because the alternative, when uh, you know you're looking at these high rents, is buying a house with high mortgage costs right now. Um, that you know really makes things out of reach for people in terms of affordability as well. How much demand uh, are you seeing from people who would you know otherwise be interested in perhaps buying a home but are sticking with renting right now even if it is more costly just because of the mortgage rate situation yeah i think there's been a lot of like volatility over the last 12 months right like interest rates going up 400 basis points in less than a year so a lot of people uh we've certainly had quite a few clients that basically you know opted to sell go to the, the rental market and see how things were going to shape up over the next sort of year uh there's just a lot of uncertainty and so people yeah, we've seen a lot of people basically delaying those decisions, assuming that, hey, you know, rates are going to go up a lot. We should see house prices naturally correct. So let's let's go and rent as a sort of a, a, a stopgap. And so there's just been a lot of pressures, I think, on the rental housing market. We add up um, with what's happening in the mortgage market, plus immigration. Um, it is a bit of a mess. Uh, what do you think this will mean for some of these urban centers where prices for both um, rentals and, uh, you know, buying real estate are, are so elevated? Uh, you're in one of them in Vancouver. I'm in one of the others in Toronto. Um, does that end up, I mean, I know it's a narrative that we've heard many times over the years, but does it end up deterring people who would otherwise be attracted to what these, you know, cities in this country have to offer uh, in terms of career opportunities? and whatnot if the price of, of living here is just too high? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's a huge, a huge problem. Um, don't get me wrong. As someone that's in the industry, I don't think, I think it's naive to suggest it's not an issue that, you know, assuming we have perpetual growth in this market without uh, wages keeping pace and uh, the cost of living sort of easing up here, I think we are going to have a, a real issue attracting people for the longer term, so I, I think it's uh, I think it's a real concern. I know there's a lot of op eds that have been taking you know a lot of economists coming out, uh, big bank economists. You had Rosenberg talking about it last week uh, about uh, I think a healthy debate potentially warranted just around the levels of immigration in this country because the reality is is we don't have the ability to add on a housing supply. And right now, what we're actually seeing you look at CMHC housing starts are actually rolling over, so they're not picking up. So we just had a million people come into this country last year and housing starts are rolling over because the cost of financing new development uh, has doubled essentially in, in, the, in the pace of uh, 12 months. So um, it's hard to envision a scenario where things improve materially on the housing front in the next couple of years. What is the development uh, like, you know, in terms of progress in the Vancouver area where you are, Steve, when it comes to rental apartments? Uh, we're trying. Uh, I think that the math is really hard. I think that uh, the cost of land is so expensive. Obviously, we have essentially we have rent controls here, so it doesn't necessarily incentivize a lot of capital into the space. Uh, CMHC has done a really great program with their CMHC Select Rental Program, incentivizing uh, very attractive financing to build purpose-built rentals. So we do have a lot of those under construction. I don't think enough to 
to really alleviate the the upwards pressure on rents. But I think it's a program that's helping. But I, I think this is a very challenging, difficult um, situation. It's, it's not going to be resolved in a couple of years, and all levels of government need to come together to figure this out. And and so I, I think it's a decade long issue that's going to take time to play out. And uh, seeing as you're, you know, on the ground there, Steve, I'm curious what people are looking for these days. Um, I mean, probably a good price, but also, uh, you know, in terms of the space that people are wanting, because, you know, in, in cities like Toronto, also Ottawa, um, there's still a lot of working from home happening. And that could or would require some extra space in your house to be able to do that comfortably at least is that still you know a driving demand uh, that you hear from people oh yeah 100 percent. so what we're seeing right now basically is we're still seeing some softness for like say a two-bedroom condo in downtown vancouver uh those would typically be occupied by young families because like you know the commute to work is so convenient and as people are now working uh more and more from home uh, we are seeing people, you know, the, those would-be buyers are, are still a little bit weak and they're actually looking for that third bedroom, the, the home office. And so they're moving out to the suburbs still. So we're still seeing a uh, huge pressure on the three-bedroom entry-level segment because um, everybody really needs that third bedroom. And I think the reality is, is what, what we have been building over the last five to ten years hasn't been a lot of three-bedroom product. It's been a lot of one-bedroom, junior two-bedrooms for the investor. So these haven't been family-oriented uh, construction. And so I think there is a huge undersupply of, of three-bedroom homes. Do you think that could change, Steve? I think that municipal governments are trying to encourage that. So yeah. I think we're slowly getting there. We had the BC government come out. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago saying they're going to do blanket rezoning and override municipal governments uh, across the province to allow uh, multifamily duplex triplexes on all single family lots. So I think there's progress uh, being made. But like I said, this isn't going to get fixed overnight.